everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Party of Sin. Not Party of Five, you know, with Jennifer Love Hewitt and uh, all those other people that I've never heard of in my entire life and went on to do absolutely nothing. But uh, Party of Sin, this is a puzzle platformer uh, that is probably best described as, like, Trine, but instead of, like, three classes, you actually have seven classes. And, of course, the classes are uh, modeled after the seven deadly sins. So if we start on the top left there, we've got Pride, Wrath, Lust. In the middle, we have Sloth. Bottom right is Envy. I forget what the absolute very bottom is. I think that's Greed and then Gluttony on the bottom left. In any case, we're going to get started here uh, in the single player mode. And we start on Hell. Basically, the premise of this game is that uh, the seven deadly sins are allowed to roam the Earth because they have a truce with Satan who supports them. Uh, even though the Archangel Michael comes down and tries to uh, put the imprison the seven deadly sins every time. However... Uh, there was a raid on the Seven Deadly Sins when they went to sign their contract with Satan this time. I realize this might sound confusing. It was confusing to me as well. Uh, but then Satan thought he was being betrayed by the Sins, so the Sins were banished to hell, uh, where I have now escaped uh, with all of them. Now, I've only got 20 minutes in this game so far, but that represents about 10% of the way through the single-player campaign so far, based on the percentage marker next to my save file. Uh, and I sort of really dislike this game. Uh, it's kind of cool in that it has so many different characters for you to choose from. Uh, but also, let's just talk, like, visually, this looks bad. Like, I, I mentioned before, you know, if we've looked at puzzle platformers or action platformers recently. Uh, Gianna Sisters, I, I didn't think looked very good. Uh, but this looks absolutely like garbage. Um, we are going to... Maybe not garbage, maybe that's a bad way to put it. I'm getting my ass kicked here. Let's switch to Envy. I almost always like to get into fights with Envy. Uh, because she has this laser. Every, uh, class, or every sin has their own unique ability, which we'll talk about as we move onwards here, now that I'm done with bitching about the, uh, general aesthetics of the game, although it'll probably come up again in the future. Basically, it just looks, it looks old to me, uh, and not particularly good old at that. So we're just gonna pick up this apple, which will give us a little extra health. Let's talk about our unique abilities for each class. So Envy has this laser that she can use to do damage and solve puzzles. Uh, Gluttony can eat people to regain health. Greed has a, like, trine-like grappling hook that he can use to solve puzzles and get around. Lust can, uh, basically seduce people and also cause special platforms to appear. Pride has a special thrust slash jump. Which, uh, we need to... How do we do this again? There's a, a way to do, uh, like a special long jump with him. Which I think is like this? Yeah, there we go. Uh, which seems kind of shallow to me, but that's okay. Uh, we also have Sloth, who is capable of shooting these bolts that make objects or people move slower. And finally, Wrath has this really neutered, like, punching ability that can break down doors. So, basically, we're gonna get into some combat here. Uh, I am gonna switch back to Envy, because Envy is the easiest to kill people with, at least in my experience so far. We can also, uh, use a, like, melee attack. This is not going super well for me so far. We can use a melee attack, but I prefer using Envy's special ability because it is, uh, so easy. So there is... Like, the ability to use multiple characters, but I haven't really found too much incentive to use multiple characters. The exception being, it's good to use Gluttony, so you can eat people and then just run away and regain health uh, when you get as low as I've gotten very recently. And there's a fairly decent mix of, like, action platforming and puzzle platforming that goes on in this, so I am actually being hit here. Anyway, we'll spit him out. Oh, I, I consumed him fully, I guess. And in that case, we're going to switch back to Envy and basically just start firing in barrages here. I might take a little bit of damage, but that's okay. We could get up on that platform, I think, using Pride's ability, but for now, we're just gonna get into some combat. There are upgrades like Trine as well. This game, to me, basically just feels like a worse version of Trine. I hate to say that, because it sounds super offensive and like I'm writing the game off before I've really uh, given it a chance, but so far I have not had a very fun time with this game at all. So we're just making these platforms go. Uh, then we might be able to use Pride to just get over to this spot. Cool, we'll get the Apple, then we'll use Envy. And we'll try to light all these torches at once, which will lower this drawbridge. Now, I will say, one of the strong suits in this game is, it does make you basically use uh, all of the units at your disposal, or all of the classes at your disposal. In Shrine, there were situations where that happened, but there were also a lot of situations uh, where basically it just sort of felt like you could use the wizard to make boxes for everything. Uh, so what we have to do here, we have to get this um, box up onto this switch, obviously, so we need to use Wrath. Obviously, I use Gluttony to spit out the box onto this. Then I think hitting the switch will cause that thing to go up. Uh, and then by using Pride, maybe? 
we can oh here's what we want to do actually this this comes up a lot we're gonna hit the switch again we're gonna hit the switch or uh hit our platform here with sloth which will cause the platform to move more slowly then we will become wrath come over here oh try to jump on that that failed miserably uh but hit the switch maybe use gluttony and and move the box slightly out of the way here hopefully oh, hopefully you understand what i'm getting at here spit him over here uh, use Wrath again, because the platform is slowed as a result of Sloth's ability. That was not very good on my part. Because the platform is slowed because of, uh, Sloth's ability, we should be able to get up here. Oh man, why is this proving to be such a damn problem? Well, what we might be able to do is just use Pride to just get up here. No, that's not gonna work. Interesting. And a good example of why I always use... Oh man, I didn't know that was gonna happen. A good example of why I almost always do, uh levels I've already done when it comes to puzzle platformers. Uh, but anyway, definitely the first part of this puzzle is set out for us. Get Gluttony, put this on here, we'll use Sloth to slow the performance of this. And then it's just like, it, it feels like that jump should be makeable. That's another problem I've had with this game so far, is situations where uh, it feels like this should be easier than it is. I guess what we could do here is actually just totally ignore that aspect and Use Greed's um, grappling hook to just get up here instead. That's a hundred times easier. So let's take Gluttony again. We're gonna get this, spit it out onto the Switch. I don't know, man. Just the animations and the graphics and even the music feel pretty cheap to me. Which, I mean, it makes me sound superficial, but at the same time, there's so many good-looking puzzle platformers out there that are also good from a gameplay perspective that you can't really afford uh, for your game to look and play... Uh, this mediocre, essentially. Now, there are strong suits to the game, which we will talk about as we get a little bit further along. Uh, one of the weak suits, this is certainly not a strong suit, is that sometimes I find it hard to tell who are my friends and who are my enemies. Like, I guess these dogs are my friends, but it almost has, or my enemies, I should say, but it also has kind of like a halo element where certain factions will just end up fighting each other if you don't get in the way. Uh, also, I feel like the soundtrack is, is really, really bad, just like shitty amateur metal. I've got nothing against metal as a genre, except when I feel like it doesn't work very well, which is, it doesn't right now. Uh, I believe the guys do have, or the classes here do have different attributes. Like, I think Pride does a lot of melee damage compared to the other classes. Uh, I'm just trying to jump over all these shots. We should probably actually take Gluttony in this situation and eat, oh, that's not Gluttony, that's Greed. Should probably take Gluttony in this situation, just eat this guy so I can get a little extra health back, because I was getting fairly low there. He's gonna run away. I think I've consumed that guy fully now. The Northern Lion story. We'll capture this guy again. Oh, he's totally dead now. That's unfortunate. Uh, again, we'll take Envy. What am I even shooting at here? Does this guy have a fucking assault rifle or something? He does have an assault rifle. That was unexpected. There will be some health over here, though. So we'll just climb this ladder. Kill this dude. You know, so far the combat's been okay, but again, it, it's, it, it just feels like a worse version of trying, even in the combat. The good news is, like, some of the classes in Shrine were, like, completely vulnerable in combat. That must be a grenade or something. Uh, whereas in Party of Sin, they all seem fairly decent in combat. The, the problem is, uh, with a few exceptions, Gluttony, Envy, maybe Pride, uh, everybody seems to control fairly similarly. Again, we're gonna go back to Gluttony here. Basically, Gluttony is, like, our support class that allows us to heal here. Eat this dude, please. Again, I feel like that's ripe with possibilities for the Northern Lion story. We're just going to hide until we get super healed up here. And we'll probably eat some more. There we go. We're back to nearly full health. And now we switch back to Envy where we can do long range damage and still cut these guys up if they get too close. So yeah, I mean, the com my complaint is, I mean, on the one hand, I was like, hey, unlike Trine, this actually has seven characters instead of three. Uh, however, unlike Trine, none of the characters feel that different when it, when it comes to combat. When it comes to puzzles, they feel differently. But I also never feel like, uh, you know, when you're playing Trine, and, you know, get ready for a number of Trine comparisons in this video, of course, but uh, when it comes to Trine, I feel like when I'm playing it, uh, there's puzzles that can be solved in a multitude of ways. Like, I could solve some puzzles with the wizard, I can solve some puzzles with the warrior, uh, and I can solve some puzzles with all three, including the thief. Whereas in this game, I'm always like, okay, there's some, like, predetermined way to solve all these puzzles, and that, and I'm not gonna say it rubs me the wrong way necessarily, but it is kinda shitty sometimes. Uh, so I think we wanna do this, we wanna get the switch up here, jump up here, put this, I like, Gluttony can't make this, I'm pretty sure. But I can spit it out, I wonder if I can actually just destroy, 
uh, these like mine carts here. It doesn't appear so. Um, hmm. I could slow things down, but it's totally unnecessary. I guess what if I first things first. Set off this platform with lust. Use sloth to slow the platform. No, that won't work. Hmm. I could slow the switch down. Not that that's necessary at all. Okay, so let's think about this. We've got a switch, which obviously we need gluttony for. Uh, as far as I know, I can't just crouch down through here. Crouch walk is apparently not a possibility. Maybe as another character, who would be able to crouch walk? Greed? Maybe... Wrath? Who I thought maybe could destroy these things? There is a possibility, I guess, that Wrath could destroy this um, mining cart right here, but I don't think so. Hmm, okay. Let's think about this. We can definitely get over there. I mean, that's not a po that's not a problem, in case you're wondering about that. We can just set this off, uh, be pride, and then use pride's jump to get over here. The real question, though, is how we're going to get down. Because I think we need to hit this switch in order to make that happen. Maybe I can jump up here as gluttony now? Again, this seems like... I hate puzzle design like this, where it's like, oh, the game has made it impossible to crouch jump, so I can't complete the puzzle, even though it feels like it should be way easier. So I don't really know... Uh, what our <laughs> possibilities are here. Uh, let's take Lust. We're gonna take Gluttony now. Get up here. How to make this jump? Good question. Hmm. Alright, we might require some editing here. Uh, but I will figure it out and get back to you. I can push it ever so slightly. Wonder if I can use Wrath and then, like, knock it. Oh, that'll do it. Okay. Now I feel better about this whole thing, but still, that was a goddamn disaster. Again, none of this stuff is explicitly tutorialized, which is sometimes good, uh, but is also sometimes frustrating like that. This is by far the hardest puzzle I've had to deal with so far. Normally, they're pretty easy and by the numbers. I, I appreciate that one for trying something new, but at the same time, that was very frustrating to deal with, which is almost something you almost never want with your puzzle platformers. Uh, we're just gonna duck under this guy. I'm gonna collect all this shit. I have no idea what this is. This is the first time I've ever seen this. Oh, I jumped in the lava. That's gonna be game over, I guess. At least we have to we're past that puzzle again. Oh, Greed can pull down flying angels with his hook. That's a nice uh, thing to know, I guess. I'm pretty sure I've never seen these. I don't want to fight him. I just wanted to pull him down. Anyway, I guess... No, I still don't want to fight him. Uh, but I guess we'll switch to pride now. I can't switch. There we go. Uh, and we'll collect all of this sweet star power, of which I have no idea what it does. Cut these guys down and get some health back, because so far it's been pretty rough for us. Yeah, I don't know, I just... Uh, the one thing, the one strength this game has, that I'll admit, is that it does have some local co-op, but again, you know, prepare yourself for a Tryon comparison. Tryon had both local and online co-op. I understand that's impractical for every uh, indie developer to have. That being said, uh, I'm not sure that necessarily excuses this for being a worse game. Oh, yeah, now we need to use Pride to get across. This is going to be a, a platforming challenge here. Not too bad, though. I'd take those any day of the week compared to that puzzle that we just had to deal with. Obviously, we'll pick up this fruit for some extra health. Uh, and we'll just cut these guys down. So far, the, the biggest complaint I could levy on this game... Oh, I can reflect projectiles with this guy, too. I totally forgot about that. Is that it's just boring. Like... I don't like the, the aesthetic, uh, like the Seven Deadly Sins type stuff. Again, I'm, I'm always confused about what enemies are my friends and which enemies are actually my enemies. Or which enemies are my friends when there's angels around and, and then enemies when there's not angels around. Uh, for, on a puzzle element and a combat element, this game does not succeed uh, as much as basically any other puzzle platformer I've played in my entire life. Um, so we spent most of our time as Gluttony there, obviously trying to figure out the puzzle there. B is proceed, which drives me crazy, but hey, why not go to uh, Tortoise Port here? We might as well do one more level. Maybe I will be uh, completely transfixed by the beauty in this one, and that will change my opinion. I believe this is going to be 10 bucks when it releases on Steam, so it's not going to be, you know, the most expensive game uh, ever produced or anything like that. And I believe Trying 2 actually was more expensive when it first came out. However, you know, Trying 2 was also $2 in the most recent Steam sale, so I feel like if you want to get that game, uh, you can certainly get it on the cheap. So again, we're just going to use Pride to kill these guys. I use Lust to stun them briefly to uh, get a little bit of leeway, but in the meantime, we can just use Pride to cut them down. As different as the characters are aesthetically, I just don't feel like there's a huge difference between them uh, mechanically for a lot of things, except for like really shallow puzzle-solving elements. And I mean, the game's not terrible, 
for the most part. It's just not a lot of fun. Every time I play it, I spend most of my time being like, wow, I could be playing something substantially better than this in basically every element. Uh, we're going to come through here. And you know, there's always the chance that this is going to be a, a complete Gianna Sisters element, or a Gianna Sisters situation where I'm going to be the guy who thinks this game is shitty and there's going to be a contingent of people out there who are going to think this is actually good. Let's just say uh, I disagree with those people. How do we get that switch to open? Am I missing something here? Do I need to hit this? Oh, that? Okay. Ah, okay, I've got it set up here. So we still have the switch in our belly. What we do is we use this, get gluttony, bring this over here. That should fall down on the switch once we hit this one. Excellent. And then we are able to proceed, okay. Most of the puzzles are like that in terms of difficulty, and to be honest with you, I actually prefer it when the puzzles are around that level of difficulty, because uh, when the puzzles get more difficult, they don't really get more difficult on a conceptual level. It seems like they get difficult because the uh, elements that each player or each class is able to interact with are pretty opaque. Like, I had no idea that Wrath could be used to knock switches down here. Like, that's something that was not demonstrated so far in the game at all. Uh, especially is shitty when you feel like, um, you know, crouch walking should just be in the game. Anyway, that's neither here nor there at this point, I suppose. Uh, we need to get across here somehow. How do we do this? I guess step one, can we just throw this switch into the abyss? That's not the abyss, even though it looks like it. Um, we should be able to just get up here, although we won't be able to climb it. Unless we have maybe pride. Oh. Pride's jump is not going to be enough. How about Greed's grappling hook? Can I use Greed's grappling hook to uh, hit the switch? It doesn't appear so, even though that was a perfect shot. Let's try it again. Alright, it doesn't appear so. Okay, so we got to get that switch up there somehow. I think we have to jump, like, through this part on the bottom. Again, it's going to be hard for us to tell, considering there's no... Uh, Crouch jumping. Anyway, we're just going to move this thing onto the switch. And then we're going to eat it and jump up simultaneously. We could use the slowing effect from Sloth as well. So let's like slow this. And then we'll eat this with Gluttony. Ah, uh, okay, I think I've got it. And then we can jump up onto this thing easily. But we need to take the switch with us. Which is going to be impossible. Unless we can jump like... Oh, man. Sometimes... This can be really frustrating. Like, I can easily get up here, but does that really help me? And I think the answer to that question is going to be no. Let's try this again. We're going to drop this on here. And I want to be able to make this jump. I think I've got it. I think I've got it. So we're going to eat this. Then run very quickly over here. Make that jump. Crouch down. All right. This is going to be perfect. I'm glad that that went a little bit better for me. Then we're going to spit out the switch. Thankfully, it didn't go over the edge. We should be able to switch to Wrath now and hit this. Sometimes the puzzle design is not so bad. Like, I thought that actually worked fairly well. Uh, but the times when it is bad, which I edited most of my swearing out there, uh, it's a serious pain in the ass. Largely, it just comes down to the fact that this might not be an awful game, but sadly uh, for the developers, there's just been too many puzzle platformers released this year for me to... Oh, I'm gonna die. Uh, there's been too many puzzle platformers released this year for me to care about one that is... Uh, largely uninteresting, unfortunately. Do I just want to stay on this thing? Like, maybe I want to stay on this bridge as it goes downwards. Uh, apparently we can catch the angels with Greed's hook. So yeah, like, on a, oh, I don't even want that. Um, I want pride. Uh, just on, like, a mechanical level, I don't think the game's that good. On an aesthetic level, the game is not... Let's put it this way. On a mechanical level, it's worse than trying. On an aesthetic level, both sound and graphics, it's worse than trying. Uh, from a multiplayer perspective, it's worse than trying because it doesn't have online multiplayer, it only has local. The only thing that might be a, a selling point is if people are an amazing fans of puzzle platformers, like they'll play basically any puzzle platformer that comes out, and they're really, really into the Seven Deadly Sins aesthetic for some reason. I'm not trying to be overly negative, I, it always gets, whenever I, I shit on a game a little bit, uh, people tend to think I'm being negative just for the sake of like getting a reaction. I'm being negative because I feel like there are better alternatives out there and you should probably save your money. Uh, rather than, than buying a game like this. Not because this is a necessarily terrible game, but because there's better purchasing options out there. Uh, so I'm not, believe me, I'm not just doing this to get a reaction. And inevitably, whenever I do a bad review of a game, there are fans come out of the woodwork. Has anyone noticed that Northern Lion's been, like, way more negative recently? That's not the case at all. Uh, I don't have anything 
up my knickers, as people have suggested. Uh, I didn't wake up on the wrong side of the bed this morning. This is actually the second day that I've played this game. Uh, and both days, I've, like, really, really not enjoyed it, for the most part. Just spend most of the time believing uh, that I could be doing basically anything else with my time, including playing games that are almost analogous to this, but substantially better in almost every way. I think we're getting close to being done with this level. Similarly, um, I should mention that I think this game is fairly short. Like I said, in about half an hour, 20 minutes of play, I was 10% of the way through, which, uh, if you do the math on that, comes out to maybe a, a three-hour game. Which is quite short. I mean, obviously one of the elements that uh, is going to be more of a selling point here is the local co-op. But without online co-op, again, you know what I'm going to say here. Why not just play Trine, basically? Let me think about this, because this, this puzzle has not gone well for us so far. We obviously need to switch this. I think we need to use Gluttony's... Or sorry, use Sloth's ability on this platform down here instead. If I could actually hit it. Uh... And then we'll just try to make this jump. Or maybe we have to switch it halfway or something. Let's just try it for now. We'll get... Oh, it's gonna be fast enough for us to, up to jump. For us to jump on that, I should say. Then if we switch to Pride, and we just execute two... Oh, too much. Alright, but I've got the basic idea down here. Alright, so we're gonna wait for this to go back a little bit. Then we are gonna switch to Pride once we get up here. Oh, I botched it again. Okay. Come on, Rat. Hit that switch. We're actually going to wait for the platform on the right to move a little bit further out, I think. This might be good. The fact that it moves slow actually complicates things a little bit. Alright, then we'll switch to Pride. Made it. Hit the switch. Again, that's the kind of puzzle I like from this game when it happens. We've got like a Castle Crashers-esque set piece there. Also saw something like that in, in On Mechanical recently. Believe me, I'm not insinuating that Castle Crashers is a puzzle platformer by any stretch of the imagination. Pick these apples up because that's what gives us our... Uh, points for the level basically our score for the level and we've got to be getting fairly close to the end here levels tend to be about 10 minutes in length even if you do struggle mightily with the puzzles at hand and i don't know what we're supposed to do oh okay what you're supposed to do there is just wait a little bit longer apparently but because i'm super impatient we are gonna die in the lava quite frankly seems like a good way to go and check out those lava models that is a great texture right there looks like what i left in the toilet this morning um, Wrath needs room to charge at full speed. Okay, who cares? Why don't we just come through this way? Speed things up a little bit. I don't really care about killing these guys, because my score on these levels could not mean less to me. And I mean that in all sincerity. Let's just get on here. And I've got to wait for a second for the turtle to go. Sorry, you're not invited. We'll just pick up a little extra health, as well as some extra points. Hopefully this turtle doesn't get me in into any trouble, although I expect that it will at some point in the near future. Those ladders are just in the background. Weirdly enough, I guess if you ever work on a lava factory... Oh, we're at a boss! This is the first boss I've actually fought. This should be interesting. I wonder how many times I'll fail this. That's cool, right? What time does the bacon narwhal? Am I right, guys? Am I right? Uh, oh, okay, so we're dead. Looks like I got my comeuppance for saying that joke. The narwhal screams before jumping. And it... Bacons at midnight. I hate myself. I hope you know that. Oh, I'm dying in the lava. How are we supposed to hit this guy? I'm going to take out Envy. And I'm going to use Envy's laser to try to whittle this guy down. And let's see what, how he jumps. Oh, that's not good. Hey, we're still alive. Then he's going to come up here. We're going to be able to hit him pretty decently. Again, look at this animation. He's just like standing still while I butt fuck him with my laser. And I think maybe we want to use Greed. Oh, and we're going to fall in the lava. Okay, but I think I've got the right idea for this fight now. Basically, we're going to use um, Envy. There's probably many ways to solve this, but we're going to use Envy to uh, hit him. Uh, and then we're going to use Greed to try to like stay away from him by using these uh, basically grappling hook spots up here. But as you can see in the meantime, like this animation is so bad, he's not even like moving his mouth or anything. He's just kind of standing there while we screw him up. Seems very silly to me. Alright, so we're probably safe from this one. Seems like I've got the general idea here. Is he just gonna pop out of the water again? He moved three times that time. Joke's on me, I guess. Oh, and we almost fell off, but apparently I'm 100% safe as long as I just make sure to jump on his tail. Alright, here we go. We'll get Envy again. And again, animation is just cheap as fuck here. Uh, one more phase of this and we should be able to be good to go, basically. 
again. This is the easiest way to dodge. One thing I will say, I, I've been reticent to talk about my feelings on Gianna Sisters, lest people think I'm retracting or reiterating my admitted hatred for that game. If you're gonna buy one puzzle platformer between Party of Sin and Gianna Sisters Twisted Dreams, uh, you should buy Gianna Sisters Twisted Dreams there, I said it. Now, we might be able to do enough to kill him here. Uh, we're very close. Alright, this is- oh, he's, like, burning red, which I don't know if is a good thing or a bad thing. For us, uh, that was really close right there. I should probably just stick to the game plan here. And not mess things up. This is proving to be a surprisingly easy boss fight, though. As well as surprisingly uninteresting and entirely unimaginative. There we go, that was easy enough. Level complete. Nope, we gotta get back on the turtle over here. This should take us to the end of the level, though, I expect, anyway. So, level complete. Fantastic! Um, what is not fantastic, unfortunately, is Party of Sin. I feel like this is a game where... I don't know, I just really don't enjoy playing it for the most part. If you're gonna buy a puzzle platformer, buy Trine, man. Trine 2 and uh, the original Trine are all great games. Online multiplayer in Trine 2 is fantastic. Similar length, you're gonna be looking at like six hours. Uh, probably way cheaper than this game, at least at launch. There's some good ideas here, but from a technical execution standpoint, it's really, really not up to snuff. Uh, and, and there's a lot better stuff on the market. If you want puzzle platformers, go look through the Let's Look At Volume 2 and Let's Look At uh, Original playlist. Uh, and you'll see a lot of good stuff that's come out this year. On Mechanical, Vessel, uh, again, trying to... Uh, even Gianna Sisters Twisted Dreams is better than this. What other puzzle platformers? I've actually got the list of puzzle platformers next to me. That I will take a look at here. Thomas was alone. Fantastic puzzle platformer. Uh, you know, Fez, Cargo Commander. Not really a puzzle platformer. But in any case, you don't need me to sit here and list off a hundred puzzle platformers that would be more fun for you to play. Uh, what you do need is to probably get those instead of this game. Now, Party of Sin is a good concept to a certain extent. I think it's a little half-baked, though. Uh, the game is occasionally frustrating when it's not being... Uninteresting, boring, and easy, uh, and beyond that, I just don't find myself having that much fun playing it. So, again, I apologize if that makes you feel bad and you're a fan of the game, but so be it. You know, opinions are like assholes, everybody's got one. Some people more than one. I have two myself, just so I can uh, poop and get buff fucked at the same time. But in any case, thank you guys for watching, and uh, I will see you next time.